Hi, I'm Weston Timmers, PLC Product Specialist with Warner Electric, and today I'll be demonstrating Rockwall Automation's Factory Talk Team One mobile app. Uh, inside the Team One app, you can be a member of one or more teams, and that's kind of like a group of uh, peers that you're going to be working with or coworkers. Um, there's a chat functionality, a team board where you can post things and uh, share things with uh, team members. Um, Connect is where we're going to connect to our devices, be it a PLC, a drive, things like that, an automation device. Uh, device status will show us uh, the status of the device on the network. Uh, there's a trend to trend tag values or parameter values in a drive. Uh, monitor will allow us to monitor tag values uh, from within a PLC. Uh, we have access directly to the knowledge base, um, and there's an action deck. And then uh, some other functionality here is uh, alarms, where we can connect to a factory talk alarm and event server, uh, an incident, so we can uh, report incidents to our peers, uh, so things that need to be uh, fixed or looked at, uh, and then a favorites area where we can favorite things within the app. So I'll come back and I'll start with uh, the connect module. So I've got a few devices already displayed here inside the app, uh, pre-created. Um, but I'll show you what it looks like to go ahead and add a new device here. So I'll hit add in the lower left. I'll have to give it a name. So I'll give it the name of uh, L63S. That's the processor I'll be connecting to. I'll hit connect. We have a couple different options here. Uh, there's an alarm connector to connect to an alarm server or a SIP device to connect to uh, an automation device such as a PLC or drive. I'll choose SIP device and then we have to give it uh, an address to connect to. So uh, in the case of a drive, you can leave it just as IP address and type that in. Um, but in the case of a processor, if we're navigating um, through a Ethernet module, across a backplane, things like that, we actually want to go over and type in a SIP URL. Um, the one in this instance is going to be here, 10.130.3. Dot 12, and that will bring me to the Ethernet module in that control logics rack. Uh, to navigate to the processor itself, I'll have to put a slash, and then I'll put a one there to get to the back plane. And then I just need to put in a colon, and then the slot number of the processor. So I'll put a two in there. All right, and it's showing up that it's present, so we can find it on the network. I'll hit save. And I'll come back out to the main screen here, come into device status, and now we can see the three devices that I'm able to see on the network. Um, this L73, a PowerFlex 525, and then that L63S that I just added. So that's just showing me status information to show that it is visible on the network. Um, I'm connected via wireless uh, onto this network. So I will uh, then go into and just demonstrate some of the information we get back here. The L73, it's showing us the revision number, um, a status, and just a little bit of brief information about the device. Um, we can do the same thing for uh, this L63S. So it's showing me a revision number and a little bit of status information. So if I come back out, uh, the next thing I'll demonstrate here is the monitor. Um, so if I wanted to monitor some tag values uh, from within a PLC, I could come into the monitor module. I've got some set up already here, so I'll just demonstrate uh, one that I've already set up. So the first step here is we're going to have to add it uh, as a connected device first, and then we're able to create a monitor group. And you'll see here that I have uh, already two tags entered in there. I just have a free running timer, a 10 second timer that's, uh, as you can see, counting up. And then I have a high limit bit that gets set when the timer reaches five seconds. Uh, so it's updating once per second here. So this is live tag values for, within the processor. Uh, if I wanted to add anything to this list, I could simply hit the plus next to the tag group here, and I can type in the tag expression. So that's just going to be the tag name. Uh, if I add another one, I know I've got another timer in there called drive timer, and I'll put dot .acc to get the accumulated value. Hit the plus there, it adds it to the tag list. And I can say done, 
and now we can see that we have that drive timer coming in as well. So that's a 20 second timer. And that's just going to be counting up and then resetting. Um, I can either uh, delete this whole device out of here or if I want to remove one of these uh, tags, I can just swipe it to the left and hit the delete icon there and then it removes it from the list. Um, so I should also mention that um, anything I configure within this app, my team will have access to as well. So if I come in here and I create a monitor group, um, anyone else that's on my team will also have access to that same monitor group. So not everyone has to set this up individually on their own device. Uh, as long as you're a member of the same team, you'll have access to this. Okay, so we'll go back out. That's the monitor. Now if I come back out to the trend, that's the last module I'll show here. I've got a couple trends already pre-created. Uh, for example, I just looked at that L73 with the free running timer. And I'll come in here and take a peek at this trend. So uh, you'll see at the bottom here I'm trending the uh, free run accumulated value as well as the high limit. And as the trend runs along here, this is also updating at once per second. Uh, you'll see I set some scaling values so that this looked nice on this trend display. Um, if I wanted to uh, turn off one of these uh, pens essentially on the trend, I could just click it on the bottom and now it's only trending the high limit or vice versa. I can alternate. Uh, down in the lower left, I can change the scale. So what I've done right now is uh, by default, everything comes in as a scale of one. Um, being that the high limit is only a bool and it can only uh, ever have a value of a zero or a one, I changed the scaling to 1000 so that if it's a one value, it'll show as 1000 on the trend just to give us a little more visibility. Um, I'll come back out and I'll show you uh, some things that we can do with the PowerFlex drive uh, as far as um, looking at parameter values. So if I create a new trend, I have the option to either um, create that based on drive parameter values or controller tags. So in this case, I'll go drive parameters. Uh, I only have one drive configured so far, so I'll choose that one. And now we get a whole list of every parameter that's in this drive. Um, so for the sake of this example, I'll just trend these three parameters, the commanded frequency, output current, and output voltage. So if I go next here, all right, so I can see that uh, my trend is running um, and I have a program set up in there to just ramp this drive up to 25 hertz, uh, hold there for a few seconds, and then it goes up to 42.5 hertz. And you can see the corresponding changes with the output current and output voltage. Um, now on this trend, uh, commanded frequency and output current, okay, those are showing up nice on the... Uh, uh, the y-axis there, um, but the output current is a little bit hard to see. So if I come in and change the scaling, first I'll save it. And change the scaling on the current to be a value of 10. And now we get a little bit better visibility on that output current on the graph there. So if I were to favorite this trend, it would show up under my favorites module, uh, which is kind of nice. So if I have a lot of trends configured and I'm not sure exactly uh, which one is going to be pertinent to me, I could favorite this one if this is one that I'm using uh, frequently on a regular basis. Um, so if I hit save here, it's going to save those scaling values. And then I can come back to my trend list here and back out to the main uh, home page of the app. Uh, the last thing I'll show you here is the knowledge base. So this is going to require an internet connection. Uh, so right now I'm connected wirelessly uh, to my plant network, right? So I, I have wireless connection into my PLC network and my drive network, um, but I also have a connection via this wireless connection out to the internet. And so not, there's not too many things within this app that require internet access, uh, but the knowledge base is going to be one of those. Um, so from here, I'm able to go in and uh, look up fault information uh, and do some troubleshooting using the Rockwell knowledge base right from within this app. Um, I'm already logged in because my login for the app is the uh, Rockwell automation login. 
So it's uh, already pre-logged in. I don't have to do anything. I can just start searching and looking through knowledge base articles. So those are some of the things that you can do with the Rockwall Factory Talk Team One mobile app. If you'd like more information, you can contact me, Weston Timmers, or your local Warner Electric Supply representative.